These are critical points that you should pay attention to. We are going to check out the construction site. Hey everyone, recently our film crew returned from St. Petersburg where for 5 days we filmed the Bull Bash Pride team who are experts at finishing work. In this video, they will construct a drywall divider. Those who are in the know will understand simply by sound. Show what mistakes people most often make when working with this material. This broken corner is the responsibility of the person installing the drywall. How to choose the right drywall and how to make sure that it won't eventually give cracks. When we use the drywall from one manufacturer and use their system, we are guaranteed quality. Because of this, you won't have cracks here or here. Alright, let's get this show on the road. Oh, uh, what are we gonna get up to now? The guys, like all normal builders, start the work of constructing drywall dividers with a plan. They create a 3D visualization in SketchUp based on the installation plan and furniture layout plan. The installation begins with the preparation of the guiding profile. The sides that will be adjacent to the ceiling and walls are glued with dampening tape. Primarily, it works as noise insulation, as well as profiles with it are much better to lay on uneven surfaces. We use profiles from the company Knauf. Then the guys de-dust the surface on which the dividing walls will be erected and begin to mount the profiles according to the laser level in accordance with the project. For a more accurate installation, the guys use a rotary laser level. It allows you to install the profile with a millimeter accuracy. For this, you need to set the level a little further from the place where the profile will go. And do not forget to take into account the distance. After the guys have installed the guiding profiles to the ceiling, floor and walls, they run the future utilities like electrical because later it will be much more difficult to do. In places where the profile gets in the way, it is simply cut and pressed to the ceiling. They then proceed to the installation of structural profiles. To achieve this, they are using a laser measuring device to measure the height of each profile from the floor to the ceiling. Subtract one centimeter, then all the profiles are cut to these dimensions and installed. At this stage in the project, the guys showed us a simple and at the same time very useful life hack, which for some reason not everyone uses. Before you place the structural profiles, look at the electrical plan and see if the future outlets do not overlap, and if so, try to move all the profiles so they do not intersect with the outlets and switches, while not changing the distance between the profiles. This can be done both in the program and on the spot by moving the outlets from the plan to the floor next to the wall. So we always leave a gap of 400 millimeters because for apartments that length is optimal. It achieves the necessary sturdiness. If we did for example 600, the structure would not be as rigid. And 600 is usually used for commercial constructions. So that's another reason we leave a 400 millimeter gap. So what are we doing now? For example, we know that there will be an outlet right over here. The goal is to make sure that our profiles don't intersect with it. Thanks to this procedure, you will save a lot of time and suffering. Most importantly, you will not violate the rigidity of the structure unnecessarily. On this stage, we will form the door openings as well. They are made of the same profiles, only with wooden bars inside. To do this, we saw a wooden bar into small pieces, because even dried wood can eventually bend and warp out of the profile in the future. 
We are cutting the plank so that it doesn't warp or twist. Let's look at it on camera. As you can see, even now, it's not exactly straight, now is it? And this plank has already been divided into section, but even it gets twisted and warped, so it's better for us to just cut it ourselves. Afterwards, we put the cut wood into the profile and get rigid structure on which you can mount the doors. And here the guys give us another useful tip from their experience. In order to quickly install all the structural profiles, make a measuring stick out of the same profile with the desired spacing. In our case, it's 40 centimeters. Put it between the profiles and you can fasten our entire structure with a crimper. Put it at a 90 degree angle and attach it. After that, we begin assembling the sheets of drywall. Under no circumstance, do not lay the sheets on the concrete base. Be sure to leave a gap. For this, we put trimmings under the sheet. So here we have a gap between the floor and the sheets of drywall. For this, we are using drywall trimmings. They are about 12 millimeters thick. This gap is necessary to compensate for any distortion or movement that may happen. Both layers need to have this gap. Later, we will fill it up with foam so that nothing gets in, in terms of trash. By the way, the sponsor of this video is Crab Systems. Crab Systems produces profile systems for drywall and stretch ceilings. They have very interesting solutions for drywall ceilings. These are the soaring and the shadow profiles. While using these profiles, the drywall on the ceiling will never crack, even if the house shrinks. Crab Systems drywall technology completely detaches the ceiling from the walls. Basically, it just floats in the air on supports. They also make shadow baseboards, which are just coming into style. The company is also famous for their technical charts, which means they have a step-by-step -step instruction for each product, links to which are in the description. On the first layer of the drywall, we use 25 mm screws. On the second, 35 mm screws. The main thing is that they need to have a length of 10 mm more than the material you screw in. Sheets must be attached in a staggered order, keeping the spacing. In our case, there is a gap in one place, but in the future, we will build another partition in that area. You can either cut the drywall with a knife or a plunge saw. It's up to you, but the plunge saw can cut thinner and more precise pieces. If the screw is poorly fixed, for example because it's too deep, then next to it, screw in another one. Yeah, so we just take our drill with a mag and two centimeters away we insert another screw. Despite the fact that the walls will be covered in two layers of drywall, the guys still fill the joints of the first layer with a plaster solution. They do this to prevent the second layer from cracking or bending in the future, which can easily happen if a screw enters the gap between the sheets. So to make sure that everything is correct, we use this trapezoidal profile, because if we use the regular spatula, as you can see, it's just going to bend and we can't really see anything. But the profile, however, it is much harder to bend and we can see all of the gaps. Before you cover the wall on both sides, we need to fully route all utilities. In our case, it's a cable for future outlets and switches, and a space for an HDMI cable. The guys put the cables for the outlets in such a way that in the future, when they make holes for the sockets, they don't damage them with a drill bit. To do this, they simply lead them out 
on the other side of the insulation and then pull it out by hand. So let's quickly talk about the insulation and the mounting. So here on both sides we're going to have electrical outlets. Here we'll have them for the TV about 90 centimeters high and on the other side we're just gonna have them about a meter high. So we put all the cables on this side and later once we cover it with drywall we make a hole on the other side and pull the cables through. And the insulation is relatively easy to move out of the way. After that we're going to drill holes for the electrical outlets on this side. So this is one case. Here we're going to have a TV on the other side. So we're going to drill through a hole on this side to the other side and then pull all of the cables through. This way when we drill we won't damage any of the cables. We've had situations where this has happened, so learn from our mistakes and do as we say, not as we do. Oh, and here we have a similar situation, just on the other side. So all the cables are on the other side and we're going to pull them through on this side and the cable won't get damaged. Very soft insulation is used so that it doesn't press on the drywall in places where the utilities are passed. Of course, Wool here plays the role of not insulation, because the dividing walls are between rooms, but rather noise isolation. The procedure is mandatory, because if the walls are left empty, they can resonate, or simply put, amplify noise. Then the guys add to the first layer, the second side of the divider, and then start adding the drywall to the second layer. Here, the mandatory procedure is to remove the chamfering with the edge planner in the places where the drywall is cut. Where the factory is remains, however, you do not need to remove anything. This procedure is important so that the painters can then properly treat these joints with plaster compounds. Here you can see that we cut the paper and a little bit of it still remains. It is essential that we cut it off. We do this to ensure that when the wall gets painted, everything is smooth. If we were to leave it as is, the person doing the painting could easily not correct this error. Simply because painters work in broad strokes, so to say. If this is not fixed, it will become a massive issue during the final stages of your build and a lot of time and effort will go into fixing a little mistake like this. Sheets are also added in a staggered pattern, and if the first layer was installed horizontally, then the second layer should be fixed vertically. By the way, our team in St. Petersburg is careful in choosing the materials they work with, but even the top manufacturers have their complaints. Make sure that the plaster board does not peel off on its own, and if there are any chips on it, it's better to cut them out with a knife. This ensures that the painter will be able to work on the walls without problems. Be sure to properly close the ends of the walls. If you get two open drywall ends in one plane, know that you've made a mistake. Such an area will be very inconvenient for the painter to work on. So this part we can't attach yet, because if we were to attach it right now, uh, we would have to come in and attach another layer. So look, if we did it like this, you see there's two layers, both are factory edges, and now we put down another layer, and then another one. So later, when we get to the finishing work, it is going to be very difficult to cover this without having it crack in the future. So instead, we assemble it a bit differently. First we put a sheet here, and then we cover it up with this one, and then we put another one right here to close it off. This way they're in a staggered pattern, and it's much easier later 
for the painter to come in and do all the finishing work without having to worry about any cracks. Before closing the second side, the guys check the shape of the wall with a rule. And if it's a little convex, which is normal, because we put less stress on the second side, they just correct it by hand. Here we can see that it's perfectly straight. Those in the know can identify this by sound. Now let's go over the second layer and uh, check for any flaws. Pay attention to the fact that the guys did not fasten the screws into the guide profiles as the structure is rigidly bound and there is no possibility for movement. So the screws are not fastened, neither here nor here. They're not fastened to the guide profiles, nothing. In the future, this will allow for enough wiggle room, so when the painters get here, you won't have cracks here or here, and everything will be great. Then, they are sure to foam up the gap between the floor and the plasterboard so that it does not get construction debris, which may subsequently interfere with the plasterboard. Plus, the foam will give an additional index of sound isolation. A similar procedure is done with the gap on the ceiling, but this is done more with the expectation that in the future, if they decide to do a stretched ceiling, it will prevent any movement from drafts. And once again, this procedure has a positive effect on noise isolation. Well, the next step is our specialist make holes for subsockets, since all cables for outlets are delivered from the other side of the insulation, they safely wheel the drill without fear of damaging them. Then get the cables by hand and everything is ready. Well, almost. It is necessary to remove the chamfer for plugs with a special chamfering tool. In the end, we got a wall that is unlikely to ever crack. In addition, it has a decent index of noise isolation because it is made by using all the latest techniques. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. We wish you a good day.